almost 900 carjackings in DC this year. Big story, a deadly attempted carjacking in Northwest DC. Today I'm gonna to be discussing the psychological differences between criminality committed for survival purposes and criminality committed for thrill seeking purposes and the role of social media and how it actually may be amplifying these futile acts. And the reason that I wanna distinguish the difference between these two forms of criminality is because DC is not new to high crime rates. DC was once the murder capital of the United States back in the late 80s to the early 90s. The city was undergoing a horrific wave of violence as a result of the crack epidemic. DC in the early 1990s came to be known as the murder capital of the country. I believe that there is a massive difference between these junctures in time, meaning back then versus right now. And in my opinion, even though there were a lot more murders and crime back then, from a psychological perspective, I believe today is much more dangerous because crime is being committed in the science of futility. And when crime has no point, and when it's not being done for any tangible benefits or some type of preservation of one's well-being, that means that it's bound to metastasize in a cancerous manner, affecting all, rather than just staying confined within its own realm. Now, what do I mean by tangible benefits or some type of preservation of one's well-being? Come on, man. Of course, I'm talking about money. I'm talking about committing crime so that you can pay your bills, so that your family can eat, so that you have shelter, etc. These are not reasons that DC has witnessed almost 900 carjackings this year. These young folks are committing these crimes merely for thrill-seeking purposes, which is much different from the young folks up in Baltimore. Just several weeks ago, authorities intercepted and seized an attempted shipment of 18 stolen vehicles at the port of Baltimore. The estimated total value is more than $428,000. Believe it or not, the Port of Baltimore is a hot spot for stolen vehicles, and that's because of its shipping route. And right now, one of the places that get stolen automobiles shipped to is West Africa. Let me clarify, I'm not just talking about the average smash and grab. I'm talking about stealing entire cars for good. Now, let's get into the psychological differences between survival criminality and thrill-seeking criminality. Let's start with survival criminality. Survival criminality refers to criminal acts committed out of necessity, driven by the individual's perception that they have no other viable means to meet their basic needs. Common factors contributing to survival criminality include things like poverty, lack of employment opportunities, and socioeconomic inequality. Three psychological characteristics of this type of criminality are as such. Number one, desperation. Individuals that engage in survival criminality often experience feelings of desperation as they believe that illegal activities are their only option to secure things like food, shelter, or other necessities that are pertinent to existing. Number two, system defiance. Now, this one is pretty interesting because I believe that it still fits under survival criminality because it's, it's enacted for the sustainability of one's self-preservation rather than only for an adrenaline rush of dopamine. Now, this refers to criminals that look at laws as if they are rules that aren't just created to keep a population civilized and orderly, but to also control the hierarchical structure of power and wealth. What I mean by this is that they look at millionaire and billionaire investment bankers, politicians, CEOs, and founders of all these 500, uh, all these Fortune 500 companies and they see how the system provides loopholes for these people to legalize their immorality. They see how the most powerful people in the world commit some of the most heinous crimes that they are, but they never seem to pay a price for the crimes. They see how big tech is poisoning our psychology, how big pharma in conjunction with uh, the food industry is poisoning our bodies and diminishing our health, which is having a massive effect on the human species, right? They see how the FBI gets away with crimes, the CIA gets away with crimes, the Pentagon get away with crimes, the oil industry gets away with crimes, Hollywood gets away with crimes, Wall Street gets away with crimes, they, <laughs> the entire top brass gets away with crimes while making millions and billions of dollars, while the middle 
to the bottom of the hierarchy is expected to follow the archaic status quo of following all the rules, get a college degree, find a job and make $60,000 a year as a rule following citizen while the founder of the company that you're working for gets a free pass to live in a world of legalized immorality. So system defiant criminals are those that refuse to live by the rules because they feel like the rules were written by the rule breakers. And these are the people that usually engage in organized crime. Think of people like the mafia, cartels, or street gangs that are more so about making money, yes, illegally, but they're more so focused on making money rather than indiscriminate killing and violence. Now, I'm definitely not saying that the mafia, the cartels, and the street gangs don't kill and create violence. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's usually not done indiscriminately. It's usually done for competitive reasons like robbery, beefs, and stuff like that. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Number three, limited criminal identity. These individuals may not identify strongly as criminals, but rather view their actions as temporary solutions to dire circumstances, meaning someone that isn't typically a person that will commit a crime, but because of some severe situation, they're compelled to carry out this one-time limited criminal uh, activity. Now, let's touch on thrill-seeking criminality. Thrill-seeking criminality involves individuals who engage in criminal acts primarily for the excitement, adrenaline rush, or sense of rebellion it provides. Motivations for thrill-seeking criminality often revolve around personal enjoyment and the pursuit of risk. Three psychological characteristics of this type of criminality are as such. Number one, hedonism. Thrill-seeking criminals are driven by hedonistic desires for excitement and pleasure derived from their illegal actions. Number two, lack of empathy. There is often a notable lack of empathy for potential victims as the focus is primarily on personal gratification. Number three, addiction to thrill. The excitement and risk involved in thrill-seeking criminality can become highly addictive, leading to a cycle of increasingly dangerous behavior. And this could be why we're seeing these pointless crimes spread as much as they are. It's somewhat equivalent to drugs. That first high is almost like heaven. Then, every time after that, you're continuously trying to chase that exact same high, but it never comes. Therefore, you then start to move up to heavier and heavier, riskier and riskier drugs. Now, how does social media connect these thrill-seeking crimes? Social media platforms have transformed the way individuals engage with the world, including their participation in thrill-seeking criminal activities. These platforms can potentially amplify and create a glorification for such behaviors in the following ways. Number one, online communities. Social media provides a platform for like-minded individuals to connect and share experiences related to thrill-seeking criminality. These communities can reinforce behaviors through group validation and normalization. Number two, visibility and fame. Thrill-seeking criminals may seek attention and recognition by sharing their exploits on social media. The potential for viral fame can incentivize and encourage further reckless behavior. For three, desensitization. Constant exposure to thrill-seeking content on social media can desensitize users to the consequences of these actions, making them more likely to engage in risky behaviors themselves. Number four, imitation and competition. Seeing other users' exploits on social media can lead to a sense of competition with individuals attempting to outdo one another in terms of daring or dangerous acts. Now, by no means am I justifying or advocating for certain crimes over other types of crimes. All crime is bad, and we should all be working towards a more civilized coexistence. In this video, I'm just merely highlighting the difference between two types of criminality and how, in my opinion, I believe one is more dangerous because of its ability to spread rather than remaining confined to its own realm. It used to be the case that if you just didn't go to certain areas of the city, then there was like a 90% chance that you wouldn't witness any crime. Now, because crime is morphed into thrill seeking, it's starting to touch every area of the city. We even had a carjacking down by the White House a few weeks ago. and. 
in a totally separate incident, some young folks tried to carjack a uh, Secret Service SUV, and this particular Secret Service detail was assigned to protecting a member of President Joe Biden's family. So, like as you can see, the thrill-seeking crimes are getting worse and worse, and that's why DC has seen almost 900 carjackings this year.